Hi there. This is John for KillerPHP.com. And today what I'm going to be doing is looking at how we can do a bit of cleanup on our project. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by just fixing up. We've been doing a lot of new calm killer PHP models user. And these can be really long namespaces and it might seem a little bit overkill. So we're going to clean that up. We're also going to get rid of all of these, this render, this render, this render, since we're basically repeating ourselves in our controller. So we're going to clean those two things up. And then we're going to look at how we can clean up our models and how they're defining various parameters. So we're going to start there. And then we're going to go and we're going to refine our persistence. We're going to move stuff into our uh, lower layers and let the the models handle the persistence of objects and so on and so forth. So we're going to move the user exists flag down to the user model and we're going to be passing the whole request object down to the model so that the model can handle that request by its own self. So let's get started. The first thing I want to do is I want to stop typing com killer PHP models user because we always know that we're working with killer PHP and it seems a little redundant. So I'm going to use the use declaration at the top and I'm going to say use com killer PHP models rather use com killer PHP and then that way down here I can just say new models user which is a little more precise and well it's not more precise but it just means that I don't have to always type in com killer PHP. So that's just a nice little shortcut. If I refresh this, nothing will change, which is good. So that's the first thing I wanted to do. The next thing I want to do is I want to pass the whole request object into this user. And I also don't want to use the constructor. The reason I don't want to use the constructor is because it's not very good practice to rely on a certain number of arguments for your models. If you do, then it means that we always have to put in a first name and a last name and an address, and this can be kind of hectic. So rather, I'd rather just declare one constructor that is a little more freeform or doesn't require any arguments. So instead here, I'm going to rename, I'm going to create a public function here called construct, and we'll just leave that empty. And then here we will rename this to save parameters. And instead of saving the parameters and requiring that this be the first name and the last name and the address, we're going to do this a little more dynamically. And what I mean is that I'm going to take in whatever the parameters are. And then for each of those parameters, I'll assign the necessary variable, which makes a lot of sense at this point. So I'll just say this key equals val. Now this is all fine and now what you'll see is that because we've got address, first name, and last name, and because in my form over here I've got address, first name, and last name, and they're identical, then in my index controller, if instead of doing current user equals like this, hold on one second, so now I can just say this new models user. Okay, so that works. So now, instead I can just do session current user and then save parameters request. And what it'll do is this can be treated like any other variable, right? So the only difference between saying user equals new models user and session current user equals new models user is that this is going to be stored in session or in memory on the web server. The other thing, yeah, so now I'm just passing in all those parameters as the request object. And then here, everything else is the same. So let's see what happens. So if I refresh this again, nothing is going to change. However, if I go back to the default page and I say, let's say my name is Jane Roberts and I live in Vancouver, 
BC and I hit submit let's see what happens okay it says require once com killer PHP controller models user so we're getting this error here saying com killer PHP controllers and then models and then user.php and this is happening because of my use declaration I made a mistake since I'm still new to this stuff myself so we say use com killer PHP and here I'm just going to say as KP and then down here I can just put in new KP backslash models user and there we go so uh, Jane Roberts and she lives in Vancouver submit the query and then if I go back to welcome index Act, index controller and then welcome then we'll see that Vancouver and Jane and Roberts and all of that is being persisted properly so now what's happening is that basically that request parameter is getting passed into the user object which is actually being stored in session so this is all nice and fine and dandy the other thing I want to do is I want to move this user exists function into the into the model. So if you look here, we could actually create a user object before setting all the parameters. A lot of very rich PHP frameworks will let you manage these kinds of parameters and the setting of various session variables, whether you're using Symfony or the Zend framework. Because we've got a very rudimentary system here and we're highlighting all these different uh, neat tricks with PHP 5.3 and uh, the MVC architecture. For now, we're going to leave it as is and we're going to shift our focus over to using session to store users and how we can basically pass or handle the callback in one page so that we can simplify our example and then move the example over to a aggregate or a collection of users rather than one user. So that's what we're going to do in the next video. The last thing that I want to try and just kind of highlight here is that we've been using this render repeatedly in our example. So I'm going to delete that and delete that and I'm going to delete that as well and now our pages aren't going to render anymore. However, if I go back to the controller abstract class at the top I can just run this render after we run the particular method and then everything will be back the way it was. So we render a method dynamically. We don't know what it's called or what have you. We know that it ends with the word action and then we render it and that's when we do and that's how we fire off the rendering of the function. So this is just a little bit of code cleanup which we should be doing along the way anyways. So we've managed to save parameters here. If we wanted to, we could easily check to see if a user exists and pass that functionality down. But I'd like to shift the focus a bit and look at how we can render multiple users using the user model. Since the user model is storing anything related to user management, it's not just a user, it's also going to be handling the persistence of multiple users. And so in order to properly illustrate this, we're going to shift our focus from the current user session variable to the user's session variable in the next video. Thanks for listening.